welcome President Videonomics Josh Messenger. A great couple of days that are uh, all prepped for you, some great content, but before we kick off, we got to remember that this is an event and we're also here to network. So um, before we bring uh, everyone up to the stage, I'd like you all to take a second and shake hands with someone new to the left and to the right of you. Make a new friend. Okay, great. So just remember now, the people that you just met, this is seeing them through very crisp uh, eyesight. Later tonight, when they look blurry, you'll remember their names and it's perfect for an event. So quick show of hands, how many of you did the 5K? 5K, how many people, show of hands? Wow, impressive. I think that some of them are still, might be, still be showering. I hope. Um, it's great, we had a great turnout. I was not there. That's not my thing. Apologize. Um, we're gonna announce some winners. So, in third place for female, Erin Griswold. If you'll come up and get a medal right at the front, Nicole will be handing them out. In second place, Amber Bull. Buell. And in first place, the fastest woman alive is Melissa Schinke. Of the male category. Number three, Curtis Calloway. Number two, Donnie Williams. And in first place, and who has probably appeared in every opening video, Jess Santoro. So there are medals waiting for you right up the front. Uh, I would like to introduce our, uh, our host, Pete Mwale, before he jumps up here. Um, Pete, we've, uh, I've just come to know over the last year or so, um, and the RPA family as well. Um, they have been uh, terrific supporters of Videonomics, very actively involved. Um, Lisa's giving me advice uh, after every event, it seems like. Um, uh, RPA and, and, and Pete in particular, why we picked him, he has a tremendous background in both digital and traditional. And so as we're looking at the theme of balancing your, vid your uh, video investments, we're talking about both from media planning and buying perspective, as well as uh, how, where your effort, your team effort goes into, whether you're producing video, um, whether you are um, figuring out where, how to do budgeting, um, balancing that internally, uh, where does uh, social video fit in, where do those, you know, 30 second, two minute, five minute, 10 minute uh, uh, pieces of creative that you're building, who builds those, where do those come from? We're gonna explore those uh, over the next couple days. So I could not have, I'll pat myself on the back, I could not have picked a better person. Pete, you've been set up way too high, so now I give you the mic. Thank you, man. Yeah, I was maybe set up a little too high. So uh, I want to thank everybody for coming here and thank the Videonomics crew in particular for asking me to host this event this year. Um, it is uh, an honor. It's such a great crew and such an interesting group. Uh, Videonomics people have been great. They're uh, very professional. They're very well organized. Everything's been planned out. I like to think of them as tight but not uptight. It's been uh, pretty easy working with them. So. Uh, it's great. I saw a lot of people did the run this morning. I didn't see it personally because I wasn't running either. But uh, it was, I think it's a great way to start. I love to see people get up and get a little energy going and blood flowing. I also really appreciate Videonomics not starting at 7.30 or 8 and having everybody groggy and just out of bed when you get here. So we've got a lot to cover over the next couple days. It should be really fun, really interesting. Um, I think that one of the things that appealed to me about this event was the very topic. You know, as a person who is in sort of the general management side of the agency business, it's really interesting to be talking about this 
whole video revolution from the complete content story. When you think about it, there's strategy, there's creative, there's production, there's distribution, there's viewers. All these different people are now faced with so many choices. Where do I put my content? What do I create? What do I watch? Where do I distribute it? How do I know if it's making money? All of those things are going to be topics that we cover over the next couple of days. Um, one of the really interesting things I think now is that we're finally getting to the point where people are purpose building content for the different channels. But one of the things that we're coming to grips with is it's really expensive to create content for all these different channels. If you take your 30 second spot and cut it down and make it a Vine video, or you cut it down and put it on Instagram, or you just make a longer version and put it on uh, YouTube, are people going to watch it? Or do you need to spend some money to seed it, to get it out there and to build it? Uh, I think one of the great, great um, interesting topics is everybody talks about earned media. And we all have great examples of earned media, but I think more and more earned media comes with a price. Uh, and it's one of the things that we'll definitely be talking about is if you really want to earn media, you've got to spend some money to get it in front of people and get it going. Um, I think one of the other things that's really interesting about this business now, though, is just the idea of content. There is so much content, and when you really think about it, there has to be. We, we thought years ago that this idea of all of these channels that were coming to cable, it was going to be brutal. Where's the content going to come from for all these cable channels? Now, how many ESPNs are there? How many HBOs are there? There are so many channels, and then forget about broadcast and cable and satellite. You've got all the different video channels that you can find online. And ideally, one of the things that we find is the more you make content that is specific for that audience, the more effective it is in reaching and engaging that audience. But it's also really expensive if you want to make a custom-built commercial or piece of content for each of those things. I think one of the other things that's really interesting about content today is we have all these places where we're not using traditional advertising. We're doing product placements. We're doing sponsorships. We're bringing people content. We're doing storytelling. Uh, from RPA's point of view, we're a full-service agency, and we've been doing digital since 1993 when we put Honda on the Prodigy network, um, which I know makes me old. But it also means that I have traditional and, and digital experience. And I think one of the things that's really gotten interesting with digital and video is that we have the ability to actually tell stories in a little bit longer format. There was a long time there where we were doing pre-roll, and we're like, oh, we got to make it fit in 12 seconds. we got to make it fit in 14 seconds before people click away. But I think one of the things that the industry is really evolving to is figuring out, how do I tell stories that people care about? We have cars, insurance companies, furniture, uh, casinos as clients. You don't just put content out about cars and insurance companies and have people go, oh, I really need to see that farmer's commercial. You have to find ways to make it interesting to them. And I think one of the successes that we've had and a lot of agencies and brands have had of late is figuring out how to make those stories interesting. Um, I'm going to be bringing up uh, some folks from Target and other places today who all have great stories. But one of the things that we did that I was really proud of this year is this year, we are in the past two years now, we've won three Can Lions, all for video that was produced completely in-house. And I think it's very different than what happened in the past, but it's because there's this ability to do storytelling and to tell things in a longer format. Uh, when you're talking about cars and insurance and furniture, you've got to find that thing that's going to make people care about it. And for us, it's finding that thing that is a cause that people might care about enough to share. Real earned media means they've got to share it, not just view it and, and see it. And I think uh, this year we did a great program with uh, a, a cause called Project Drive-In. Most people don't know this, but the 2014 is the year that the movie industry has been looking at for years as the time when projectors were going to be all digital in theaters. No more cans with reels in them. And most of the theaters that you go to have switched over years ago, but drive-in theaters don't make enough money. These things cost like $75,000 a piece. So what they did was we set out to raise this issue, bring some uh, attention to the cause, and we just created a really nice little short four-minute video about the cause, about the culture of cars and drive-in theaters. And in so doing, we got tons of earned media. We won a gold can line or two. And more importantly, I think at this point, we've successfully raised money to buy 57 projectors for drive-in theaters. And those drive-in theaters in those local communities really 
get people talking. People care about that. They don't care about buying an Odyssey until it's time to buy an Odyssey, but they care about that community, that place where they've taken their family, that place where they grew up, or where they used to go sneak drinks when they were in high school. So it, it's something that we're proud of, but it's also, I, I think, a really fun part about video today is that we've got this opportunity to really be a little bit smarter and a little bit more engaging and find ways to communicate. So not only do we have this issue of where do we put this content and where do we develop it, we're doing it in-house, but we also have tons of partnerships. I know there's a lot of people in the room here that come from content producers, from publishers. I think one of the things that's really interesting today is that we're not just buying media. You know, right from the start, the networks and other publications and other broadcasters are figuring out how can we do integrations, how can we do tie-ins. Lisa Herdman is here from our network group, and years ago, she was doing things with NBC where instead of just a product placement in the show, we would get the people from 30 Rock to do vignettes that were fun. People cared about them a lot more than just seeing a food bar and a vending machine in the show itself. Um, those kinds of things are fun. People are becoming much more used to it and much more interested in it. So partnerships, developing more content, finding ways to make things work, just don't cut your 30 second spot down to six seconds and put it on Vine. Um, I think the last thing that we're gonna talk about uh, in this overall uh, discussion is ROI. There's all these places to put your content. There's all these ways to develop your content. There's lots of different ways to invest it. How do we know which ones are working? One of the things I always have to work with our creative teams on is they think, you know, a bunch of people were tweeting about it or it was written up in Mashable or AdAge, this is success. And I always say, success is when the media that's covering it is the media that our customers watch, not the media that we watch. It's like the fascination right now with real-time marketing. I feel like real-time marketing is this really fun thing that we in the industry are talking about. I don't think that consumers care that much about it. AdAge loves it, it's really interesting. It's who's doing the best job of real-time marketing during the Oscars? It's interesting, but it's not like it's really moving the needle from a consumer point of view. So it's something that's gonna keep playing out. So I, I think one of the great things about this though is we're gonna spend a lot of time over the next couple of days talking about ROI. What really works? Where's the money invested coming back to our clients? Uh, and I think before I bring Christy up here to start our next presentation, I think one of the things that I love about Videonomics and this conference is uh, years ago when I first got into digital in the mid-90s, I think one of the things that fascinated me when I first took over our digital group was the people in digital all seemed to be superstars. They were all like little rock stars. They were so energetic. Everybody was smart. Everybody had a lot of passion. And I think that what it really came down to is those are the people that were really hungry to do something new, to learn, to keep evolving, to keep changing. And the agency business in the early to mid-90s had gotten fairly stagnant. We made widgets. We bought spots for widgets and we put those widgets on the air. Now it's so much more interactive and there's so much to do that, is, that really requires us to bring strategy, creative, media together to get people around the same table and talking. But I think the great thing about people that come to conferences like this is these are the people that have that curiosity, that still wanna learn, that don't think they know everything, that think there's an opportunity to pick up at least a few nuggets that you can bring back to your office and say, I learned something really cool. I met somebody really smart. The people that come to these kinds of things I always think of as the best and the brightest in the industry. There's a lot of thought leadership here. So hopefully you get to meet a lot of people and uh, make some new friends and, and some connections. It's a good room and a great event. I mean, I can't imagine a better place than Baccara uh, and Santa Barbara. How many people have been to a conference in Orlando? <laughs> Jeez. I, it must be cheap to get rooms in Orlando because I can't think of another reason to go there. Even when my kids were young, I couldn't stand it. Uh, sorry for those of you from Florida, but it feels a little swampy to me. Um, and there are great places in Florida, it's just not Orlando, sorry. Um, so with that, I think we are probably ready to get it kicked off and move on to our, uh, our first presentation.